For today, I will be discussing specific topics under Chapter 4. The topics includes the following. What constitutes a good test? Norms? How standard is standard? Sampling to develop norms and the type of norms. But before I will discuss those topics, let me ask you something. Have any one of you took such tests or other similar forms like this available online? If yes, how does it affect you after seeing the results? Okay, this is so important to consider. Because tests like this available online are not standardized. That is, they do not undergo any procedure to secure its reliability and validity. Now why does it matter if it's standardized or not? Tests were important because this provides insights to the individual that might affect her or him positively or negatively. That is why it is important that we consider standardized tests that were carefully crafted out from valid and reliable research so that the insights that someone might be acquiring would be valid as well, if not 100% accurate. So let us proceed. Uh, discussing what constitutes a good test. So we have the first common sense criteria. It includes clear instructions for administration, scoring, and interpretation. So administration is the way that it should be conducted. What are the specific conditions to be considered? Next is scoring. So we have uh, talked about scoring and scores. In chapter 1, SCORE is an evaluative code. In the process of assigning such evaluative codes, according to one's performance in a test, a test, interview, or other behavior samples is termed as SCORING. The interpretation is the way that the scores were given meaning must be given clear instructions as well. So next, a good test uh, also offers economy to the one who took the administration and to the test developer. So, good test undergo series of process before it was established to be a good test. That process is not easy and costly. That's why good tests like those uh, ink blot tests or Rorschach ink blot test and Wechsler Adels intelligence tests were sold for a high cost. Sometimes, this could serve as bread and butter to the test developer, even to the one who administer it. So the next criteria includes technical criteria. So for technical criteria, we have psychometric soundness. And under psychometric soundness, uh, first we have reliability. The criterion involves the consistency of the measuring tool, the precision with which the test measures and the extent to which error is present. In the measurements, uh, or in theory, the perfectly reliable measures the same way. So when we talk about reliability, it concerns with the consistency of the measures created by a specific test. For example, if the tests were designed for students in Stagum City, the test must yield consistent measures sa kung saang paralan nun siya within Tago maikandak. So another um, under psychometric soundness is validity. So psychological tests like other tests and instruments are reliable to varying degrees. In addition to being reliable, tests must also be reasonably accurate. The test should be valid. It must measure what it purports to measure. So when we are talking validity, about validity, naman, it must measure what it intends to measure. For example, the binary test seeks to measure intelligence. It must truly measure this construct to make it valid. Di pwede na mag-measure siya ng ibang construct na hindi related sa intelligence. So that is technical criteria under psychometric soundness, reliability, and validity. So, talking about validity, we have certain questions or uh, the following questions to consider with regards to evaluating the validity of the test. So, we have item-focused question and questions grounds related to interpretation. For item-focused, we have these questions. Do the items adequately sample the range of areas that must be sampled to adequately measure the construct? Number two, how do individual items contribute or detract from the test validity? And 
Questions on their grounds related to interpretation includes the following. What do this course really tell us about the targeted construct? How are high scores on the test related to test takers' behavior? How are low scores on the test related to test takers' behavior? How do scores in this test relate to scores on other tests purporting to measure the same construct? And how do scores in this test relate to scores on other tests purporting to measure the opposite construct? So those are questions uh, that might reflect specific types of validity such as phase validity, content validity, or construct validity. More of it will be discussed uh, on the following chapters. So we have also other considerations. So a good test is a useful test, one that yields actionable results that will ultimately benefit individual test takers or society at large. So a test was created to serve a certain purpose, purpose that will benefit an individual in the community uh, that he or she lives. For example, aptitude test would help a certain organization in evaluating their employees' ability to learn specific tasks. Test about personality will give meaningful insights to an individual. Results from a specific test could serve as basis for interventions as well. So other considerations is that good test is one that contains adequate norms. So later we will discuss what are these norms. Next, tests also are tested or we have putting test to the test. So questions in considering or evaluating a test. Test undergo a series of processes before it can be considered as a good test. So these were some or few of the questions to consider in evaluating a test. First, why use this particular instrument or method? Make sure you have your purpose at hand before you choose what test you wanted to use and consider how this test could help you attain your purpose. Number two, are there any published guidelines for the use of this test? Published guidelines about the administration, scoring, and interpretation were provided by test developers. You may want to check this before you use a test. Number three, is this instrument reliable? Consistent ba siya? Number four, is this instrument valid? Tama ba ang kanyang sinusukat? Or sinusukat niya ba ang dapat niyang sukatin? Number five, is this instrument cost-effective? Of course, upon using a test, you must consider its practicality when it comes to cost. If the gain of your research outweigh its cost, then it would be practical to use your test or to use the specific test. Pero kung sakaling parang gumagasas ka lang tapos di ka sure kung beneficial ba siya o hindi, you need to think twice. Number six, what inferences may reasonably be made from the test scores? And how generalizable are the findings? Ano ba ang maaari mong makuha out from the test course? And ang generalizability of the findings must also be considered, especially when you were dealing with test results that you deem would be important to the larger population. Norms. So norms also referred to as normative data. Norms provides a standard with which the result of the measurement can be compared. So, karamihan sa mga norms, ang kinukuha ay yung average or yung score kung saan pinaka-common ang lahat ng individual na nag-take ng specific na test. So, take for instance, ang IQ. Kunyari, ang average na kinukonsider sa IQ is 100. So, kung yung IQ mo mas mataas pa sa 100, let's say 110, ibig sabihin na umusal mo ang malaking number of individuals na nafo-fall sa average IQ na 100. So, norm reference testing and assessment. A method of evaluation in a way of deriving meaning from the test scores by evaluating an individual test taker's scores and comparing to scores of the group of test takers. So, a common goal of norm reference test is to yield information of a test taker's standing relative to a comparison group of test takers, so standing or ranking. For example, those who took the licensure examination for teachers will be judged as pass or not based on norm reference. Kunyari, ang requirement ng test ay dapat uh, nasa 75th percentile ka para makapasa ka in comparison sa lahat ng scores na nag-take ng test. So, 
makakapasa ka even though kung ano man yung score mo, basta't nasa 75th percentile ka. Pero kung kunyari, masyadong mataas ang score na naging highest sa exam, tumataas din ang cut score na kailangan mong ma-reach to pass the exam kahit manatiling ang requirement ay nasa 75th percentile. So, nagkakaiba ang kahulugan ng norm sa kanyang singular, plural, and verb form. So, norm in singular, plural, and verb form. Norm. Norm in singular is used in scholarly literature to refer to behavior that is usual, average, normal, standard, expected, or typical. So, dati, ang norm ay... Or for example, lati ang norm kapag sumasapit na ang buwan ng June or August, expected that we are a students na sa school na tayo. Pero dahil sa pandemic, ang new norm na karon na ngayon ay ang online class. So there were plenty of norms na pwede nating mapansin in our everyday lives. Basta yung mga bagay or kilos na nasa normal na estado or expected ng karamihan. But if it deviates from what is normal, that is another thing to consider as well. Baka kasi, norm lang yan ng uh, isang specific group of individual that is unique to them. Kasi may mga nagkakaiba uh, sa norms dahil sa pagkakaiba on the basis of gender, age, nationality, etc. So later, madidiscuss pa natin yan sa topic about types of norms. So, norms. Norms is the plural form of norm, as in the term gender norms. In a psychometric context, norms are the test performance data of a particular group of test takers that are designed for use as a reference when evaluating or interpreting the individual test scores. Example nito ay yung ginagawa sa standard distribution of test scores na ginagamit ng normal distribution. So, remember the bell curve? Makikita natin yan sa next slide. Kung mapapansin nyo, itong nasa gitna kung saan pinakamataas ang curve ay nandyan mafufol ang scores ng mga individual na nagtake ng isang test. So, dyan nafufol kadalasan. So, for example, hypothetically, exam ito, tas ginawa ng normal distribution, at kadalasan ng mga scores ay nafufol sa range of 58 to 58. Uh, 59 over 70. So, sa normal curve, masasabing ito yung nandito sa pinakataas ng curve. Ito yung usual na score. So, yan yung norms. Norming. Norming the verb form of norm. This refers to the process of deriving norms. Norming may be modified to describe a particular type of norm deviation. So, ang paraan ng pagkuha ng norms is tinatawag na norming. Yun yung verb form niya. So, at other terms such as normative sample, ito yung group of people whose performance in a particular test is analyzed for reference in evaluating the performance of individual test takers. So, program norms. Since norming a test is very expensive, especially when considering a nationally representative sample, some test manuals provide what are obviously known as user norms or program norms. This consists of descriptive statistics based on a group of test takers in a given period of time rather than norms obtained by formal sampling methods.